Family Theater presents Stephen McNally and Joan Leslie. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Home for Thanksgiving, starring Joan Leslie. To introduce the drama, here is your host, Stephen McNally. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, or peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, Home for Thanksgiving, starring Joan Leslie as Letty. <laughs> Only old-timers in New Plymouth remember that Letty Polk isn't a member of Clark Atwell's family. They recall the day Clark brought Letty to the farm from the orphanage downstate. She was to take care of his wife, Helen, who just had her fourth child. Letty was just 15 then, but old for her age. That was 20 years ago. The children Letty cared for are grown up and married now with children of their own. And the big farmhouse on the old mill road is usually quiet, except for occasions such as Christmas, Fourth of July, or Thanksgiving. Today, in the Atwell kitchen, Helen and Letty are preparing for the big day ahead. And this year, we want to be sure there's plenty of dressing. You know how the men love it. Honestly, I believe they'd rather have the dressing than the turkey. <laughs> I'll fix some separate for Tom. He just can't eat onions. Oh, that's right. I'd almost forgotten, Letty. <laughs> Oh, it's been so long since Tom sat down to dinner with us. And the others used to tease him about not eating onions. He used to take it to be a weakness. I told him not to fret. We've all got our peculiarities. <laughs> oh, you were always partial to Tom. Well, he was the oldest. He used to help me with the others. Letty, do you suppose he'll be much changed? Nope. Not in any important way. Oh, but to be gone for ten... Well, almost 11 years all over the world. Why, wherever the army took a notion to send him. Boy, he didn't seem different when he came home on leaves. Well, anyone can pretend for a few days, but now he'll be home to stay. <laughs> and aren't you glad? Heard Mr. Atwell singing the other day. He hasn't done that since the children were little. Oh. They'll all be here this Thanksgiving, Letty. The whole family together. Fourteen of us, counting the two babies. <laughs> Tom's never seen Ella's baby, and... He's only met Jerry at the wedding. Yes, he's got a lot of catching up to do. This family's bursting at the seams. Oh, well, Susan and Ken will drive. Ella and Jerry will have to fly in. Mm -hmm. And Reed will hit a ride with some friends from state. And Tom will be in on the 5.30 train Wednesday evening. Yeah, we must forget to have Clark bring the high chair down from the attic. Oh, I'll get it. Mr. Atwell's got enough to do between now and Thursday. I'd better air out some of those quilts we've had stored away. Oh, I know it's mm. best not to cling to your children once they've grown up and gone, but, but it is nice to have them back with you at times like this. Sure, that's what families are for. Oh, yes. Thanksgiving is a family time. Oh, it's been nice to have outsiders in these last years to make the table seem less empty, but it's not the same as being with your own. Of course, there's those who don't have families. Oh, Letty. Don't pay any attention to me. Oh. I talk too much. The older I get, the more I talk. <laughs> what you say usually makes good sense. Have you heard from your brother and his wife lately? Yes, I had a letter last week. Oh, is he doing well? This has been a good year for them. They bought a new house. It'll give them a lot more room. Well, Middle Falls isn't far from here. A couple of hours on the train. You ought to pay them a visit, Letty. Maybe I will. Sometime when I can be spared here. Well, it's a shame when you've just the one close relative in the world not to keep in touch with him. Well, I left the orphanage so many years before Brother did. We never really had a chance to be what you'd call close. Oh, you were so young when you came here, Letty. <laughs> I remember looking at you and saying to Clark, Oh, she'll never do. She can't keep those wild youngsters in line. <laughs> Why, Tom was almost as old as you. He was going on 14. I was 15. But you proved me wrong, though. You did a wonderful job. Oh, well, they were good children. Oh, 
Reed will be 20 next spring. You've been here 20 years. That's right. It's hard to believe. Until you look at Susan's two children. See Ella's baby. <laughs> Letty, have, um... Have you ever thought of leaving? Well, I mean, uh, making another life for yourself? Well, I've... I've thought of it. My brother mentioned it in his letter. Well, Clark and I are getting on, and if anything should happen... Oh, well, just... There's something we have to decide right this minute. We've got to finish this menu now. I think we have just about everything. Yeah, let's see. Cranberry sauce, turkey, sweet potatoes, dressing, peas. I thought I'd bake a chocolate pie for dessert. Chocolate? Oh, but Letty, we've got to have pumpkin pie. Why wouldn't be Thanksgiving without it? Oh, I'll bake pumpkin pies, too. The chocolate is for Tom. That's his favorite, of remember? Of course, for Tom. He'll appreciate it, Letty. Clark, are you going to work all night? Yeah, it looks like it. Honestly, Helen, I can remember a time when a man could farm who didn't know how to write his name. Now you spend more time filling out forms than you do in the fields. <laughs> Maybe Tom can take over some of this paperwork. Oh, of course he will. Helen, do you suppose he's really set to stay here? Well, that's what he said in his letters. Ten years in the Army had given him all the roaming he wanted. Mm. Now he'd like to settle down. He wants a steady, secure kind of life. Well, he's a hard worker, and he's as stubborn as they come. <laughs> <laughs> so, all he needs for success is a wife who believes in him. Hmm? You know, you'd have thought Tom would have met someone before now. Well, he told me once he'd never marry so long as he was in the service. He'll find someone in good time. Uh, sure he will. Clark, uh, Letty and I were talking today about Thanksgiving, the family being home. <laughs> she gets as excited about it as we do. Clark, I think you and I have been terribly selfish. Selfish? What way? We've just taken it for granted that Letty was happy here. Well, isn't she? Well, from some things she said today, I think she'd like to make a life of her own. What do you mean, make a life of her own? Well, her brother's doing quite well in Middle Falls. He's invited Letty to come and visit him. She might even decide to make her home there. And besides, maybe in Middle Falls there'd be someone who... Hmm? Who'd fall in love with her? Well, is that what she wants? Well, any woman wants to have her own home, her own family. Clark, I'm going to insist that Letty go to her brother's for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving? But Helen, with all the children here, how will you manage without her? Oh, Susan and Ella can help. It's not fair to keep Letty from being with her own people just because it'd be handier for us if she stayed here. Well, if you put it like that. It's the only way to put it. Yeah, you know best, my dear. It's the only fair thing to do, Clark. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell Letty that she's to go home for Thanksgiving. You know, I really liked that sermon this morning. Something we can all take to heart. Yes, Thanksgiving ought to mean more than just an annual chance for us to overeat. Yes, it was beautifully put. Whatever each of us has harvested in this year that has passed, we should give thanks. And I like the part about the harvest not being only in material things. Yes, that's something we all overlook. You know, this is my favorite time of the year. Bright and cold. Wouldn't surprise me if we had snow before Thanksgiving. And Susan's Billy ought to be old enough to make a snowman this year. <laughs> uh, Letty, um, Clark and I had a long talk after you went to bed last night, didn't we, dear? Uh, yes, 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 we did. A long talk. We decided that Thanksgiving was certainly no time for selfishness. And, Letty, uh, we were saying yesterday that Thanksgiving's a family time, a time for being at home, each person in his own home with his own family. Do you remember? Yes, I remember. Well, Clark and I want you to go home this Thanksgiving. Go home? Yes, to your brothers in Middle Falls. Helen said he'd invited you to come. Why, yes. Yes, he did. But, well, I couldn't go now at Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, why not? Well, well, Mrs. Adwell can't take care of all those people without me. There'll be so much baking to do and, and housework and looking after the babies. Well, if I weren't there, she'd have no chance to visit with the children. Now, Letty, we're not going to let you sacrifice again. This year, we're going to think of you and what you want. <laughs> 
Oh, but but I want to help. No, if she doesn't want to go, oh, Helen. She must go. It's right for her to be with her own family. Well. If you and, and Mr. Adwell want me to go. We do. You can help me the first part of the week and then catch a Wednesday afternoon train to Middle Falls. Oh. How, how long did you expect me to stay? Well, just as long as you like, Letty. Take time to meet your brother's friends. Look around Middle Falls. All right. All right. Whatever you say, Mrs. Adwell. Uh, Letty, uh, what's for Sunday dinner? Oh, Mrs. Atwell said to keep it simple today. <laughs> that sounds like, sounds like we're going to go hungry. I suppose you two are saving the best for Thanksgiving, oh? That's right. Nothing but the best for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm all ready, Mr. Atwell. Uh, Letty, how nice you look. <laughs> that new hat's very becoming. Yeah, does nice things for your eyes, Letty. Oh, thank you. Well, we better get started. It's uh, 25 to 4. Tell them, tell them all hello for me. I, gee, I just hate not seeing them. You be sure little Billy keeps warm. He's had that cold, you know. Oh, we'll take good care of him. And, uh, and Tom's chocolate pie is on the top shelf in the pantry. Don't let anyone else have it. It's just for him. Oh, I'll remember. Goodbye, Letty. Have a nice Thanksgiving. I'm, I'm sure I will. Goodbye. Oh, it's good to be home, Mother. It's wonderful to see you, Susan. Uh, shouldn't we put the baby down while she's still asleep? Oh, Ken can bring in the car bed as soon as he and Billy finish inspecting the horses and the cows. <laughs> no need to bring in the car bed. We've got a baby bed all set up. Oh. Just bring her in here. Well, now, who in the world remembered this bed was in the attic? Letty. <laughs> she brought down the high chair for Billy, too, and the sterilizer set up in the kitchen. There. Well, she'll nap for another hour at least. Where is Letty? Shh. We shouldn't talk in here. Come out the living room. But where is she? When she didn't come to the car, I suppose she was working in the kitchen. Oh, sit down, dear. Get warm. That's a long, cold drive. Mother, for the last time, where's Letty? Well, I decided it was time the Atwell stopped being so selfish. I sent Letty home for Thanksgiving. Home? Well, I thought this was her home. Oh, she has a brother. He's doing quite well in Middle Falls now, and he wanted her to pay them a visit. Your dad took her to the train. Well, this is a surprise. I... I can't imagine Thanksgiving without Letty. You, uh, you wrote that Billy had been sick. No, he had a cold. He's much better. Well, Letty fixed a special bed for him where she thought he'd be warmer, and she dug out that old tractor he liked so well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to be upset when he finds out Letty's not here. Well, I, I guess everyone's going to be upset. Huh. Well, I still say it's best for Letty. That's what matters. <laughs> Wait! Tom! Oh. Oh, I, I couldn't believe it was really you. Oh, honey, it's so good to see you. Oh, you look wonderful, Tom. Just wonderful. Oh, but you're early. Your dad's meeting at 5.30. Oh, I wanted a chance just to look around. I've got to get reacquainted with you, Plymouth, the family, with you, Letty. Oh, I, I think it's fine you decided to come back. Your dad needs you, and... And your mother's missed you a lot. She gets awful lonely with all the children gone. And what about you, Letty? Are you glad I'm back? Have you missed me? You know I have. Didn't I tell you in my letters? Oh, if you knew what those letters meant to me. I read them everywhere. North Africa, Italy, London, Japan, Korea. And even if I didn't have time to answer, I knew your letters wouldn't stop. I thought you'd like to know how things were. I looked forward to writing them. It was... Well, it was a little bit like talking to you. All aboard! Oh, Tom, I've got to go. My train's leaving. Go? Well, where are you going? You're not taking a trip the day before Thanksgiving. Yes. Your mother thought I, I should spend Thanksgiving with my brother. I'm leaving now for Middle Falls. But you can't leave, Letty. Not on the day I come back. Oh, I've got to, Tom. As your mother says, family should be together on Thanksgiving. You go home to your family, Tom. 
and I'll go. I'll go home to mine. Goodbye, Tom. Goodbye. I was beginning to get worried. What kept you so long? Where's Tom? Well, he must have missed a 5.30. Next train's at 11. I'll meet that. Oh, well, that's it, of course. Tom was always having trouble with... <laughs> the others here? No, Reed's upstairs changing his clothes. Uh -huh. Susan and Ken, the children, have been here a couple of hours. Well, how's my Billy boy? Oh, he's cried ever since they arrived. Cried? Why? What's the matter with him? Well, he misses Letty. He would brought her a present, and it broke his heart when she wasn't here to take it. Helen, I still wonder if we did the right thing there. Why? What do you mean? Did Letty say anything? Oh, no, no. No, she didn't say a word. But she looked like we were exiling her to Siberia. I've never seen anyone look as lonely as she did on that station platform. Oh, but, well, if she didn't want to go, she could have said so. It, it occurred to me, Helen, that maybe she went because she thought we didn't want her here. Oh, Clark, no. Well, there was all this talk about Thanksgiving being a time for families to be together. Well, maybe Letty got to thinking that we considered her as an outsider. But she knows that's not true. But, Clark, I, I, I only wanted her to be happy. Well, it's too late to do anything now. She's in Middle Falls. I thought I heard Dad's voice. Sue! <laughs> You're about to be kissed by your eldest daughter. Oh, well, wonderful. <laughs> oh, you look fine, Sue. Oh, well, we don't need to stand around the kitchen. Come on in and see Ken and Billy. <laughs> oh, well, Ken's putting Billy to bed. You can see him in the morning. Well, isn't this pretty early to put Billy in bed? Well, he's literally cried himself to sleep, and he won't let go of that package he brought for Letty. Oh, it's a shame Letty's not here. <laughs> Must we keep talking about Letty? Helen! Well, you're all making me feel as if I'd taken her away from you. I, I was only trying to do what I thought was best for her. <laughs> and it looks as if I've spoiled Thanksgiving for everyone. I'm sorry. Believe me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I guess I'd better get started. Susan and Ken going with me? Oh, I think they're pretty tired, dear. Why don't you go ahead? All right. Uh, you needn't wait up. Oh, I couldn't sleep. If Tom isn't on this train... He I... will be. He will. Why? But, Clark, mm. someone's coming up on the porch. Uh, maybe it's Ella and Jerry. Hi, Mom. Oh. Where? Dad? Tom! <laughs> oh, Tom, we were so worried. <laughs> How are you, son? Ah, gee, it's good to see you. To be home. I, I was just about to drive in to meet the 11 o'clock train. I got in on the 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock? But it's... What's 10.30, Tom? Where have you been? Well, Mom, as I got off the 4 o'clock, I met Letty getting on. You saw Letty? I saw Letty. And I persuaded her not to take that train. Well, I, I don't understand. Neither do I, Mrs. Atwell. Letty! Well, but we thought that you... Letty didn't want to go to Middle Falls, Mom. She wanted to have Thanksgiving here with us. Just as she has for the last 20 years. Oh, Letty, why didn't you tell me? Well, I thought you wanted me to go. I thought you wanted just the family here. Oh, no, Letty, no. Oh, what a mess I made of things. Oh, it's all right now, Mom, just a misunderstanding. She knows now how we all feel. She's one of the family, our family. Oh, Billy cried himself to sleep tonight because you weren't here, Letty. Oh, well, you'll be all right in the morning when he finds out that you've come back, though. And she's <laughs> back to stay. Uh, the reason we're so late, I took Letty to dinner and I asked her a question that's been in my mind for a long, long time. And she said yes. A question? Tom, you mean that you and Letty... I asked her to marry me, Mom. Oh, but I had no idea. Neither did I. Till I went away, and then Letty wrote me, well, not love letters, not in the ordinary sense, but well, letters about the farm, about the family, and I fell in love with the woman who wrote those letters. And I've been in love with Tom since the day Mr. Atwell brought me here. Oh, Tom, Letty. Well, I've never been happier to, to have both of you here from now on. Congratulations, son. Why, Clark, you... You said a farmer needed to work hard 
have a stubborn streak and know his wife believes in him. <laughs> That's right. And now Tom has all the qualifications. <laughs> oh. oh, gracious, it's getting late. And tomorrow's going to be a big day. We'd all better get some sleep. All right. Uh-oh, just one thing. I didn't have any dessert tonight, and Letty said she baked a chocolate pie. Oh, it's on the top shelf in the pantry. I'll get it for you, Tom. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a wonderful Thanksgiving after all, dear. The best, Helen. The best ever. <laughs> This is Stephen McNally again. Once a year in Southern California, all the people who moved here from Iowa have a picnic. It's usual, qu usually quite an occasion with a picnic table nearly a mile long, every conceivable kind of picnic dish, and thousands of nice people renewing acquaintance with thousands of other nice people. Yes, it's quite an event, the Iowa picnic, but it's nothing new. Centuries ago, our ancestors were holding similar get-togethers. But those were strictly family affairs, clan gatherings. At certain times each year, all the sons and daughters, uncles, aunts, cousins, brothers and sisters would bundle up all the children and off they'd go to spend a couple of days with the patriarch, the head of the family. Of course, there'd be athletic events, feasting, dancing, singing, and the general renewal of family ties... But these things were extra. They were not the purpose of the gathering. The purpose was family prayer. That's right. Family prayer. They would gather as a family to pray as a family. To acknowledge the fatherhood of God and their complete dependence upon him in everything. To pray for the things they needed and to thank him for past favors. So you see, your forefathers placed a great value on family prayer, and rightfully so. For they could have given you living proof of what we say each week here on Family Theater. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. <laughs> From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Home for Thanksgiving, starring Joan Leslie. Stephen McNally was your host. Others in our cast were Irene Tedrow, Alice Backus, John Stevenson, and Pat McGeehan. The script was written by John McGreevy, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present The Indispensable Man, starring Robert Stack, Deborah Paget, and Leslie Gay. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.